Hello everyone, this is Prerna from Chantan Patek School. Today we will start revising class 8 mathematics and your second terms chapter 6 square and square root. And you, are already, you have learned the square and square root in your class. But again we are going to revise this for your examination. So exercise 6.1 in this first bit is what will be the unit digit of the squares of the following numbers. So here a number is given this is 272. In this number 2 is in unit place. So here you have to uh, solve that is nothing but unit digit of the square. What is the number here in unit place? 2 is in 1's place, 1's place or unit's place. What is the number given here? The number in the unit's place of this given number, the digit in the given number is 272 is the number and the digit in 1's place is 2. So 2 is one is in 1's place of unit's place and 2's square is 2's square is 4. That means the unit what will be the unit digit of the square of the following number? The square is, of course, if you take 272 square, it ends with 4. Because 2 is in 1's place. Any number, it ends with 2, its square ends with 4. Now, let us move on to the next question. That is B1, 52,698. Here, 8 is in unit place or 1's place. 8 is in 1's place. Or unit place. Unit place is nothing but one's place. Now, what is 8 square? 8's square is 64. 8 square is 64. And in 64, one's place is 4. Because this is a two digit number, again its one's place you should see which is 4. So, the unit digit of the square of the following number that is 52,698. 8 is in 1's place and its square is 64 and in its square the 4 is in 1's place. Now let us move on to the next question that is the following numbers are obviously not perfect squares. Give reason. Why this given numbers are not perfect square? Already it is given that it is not a perfect square. But you should decide why it is not a perfect square. Here when you check 1's place 3 is in 1's place. 3 is in 1's place. Therefore, the reason is because 3 is in 1's place, the number is not a perfect square. The number is not a perfect square. Because in the properties of square and square root, we have learned that the number which ends with 3, 8, 7, such numbers are not perfect square. So, here the reason is 3 is in 1's place, so the number is not a perfect square. And here this is 64,000. We can say that the number ends with 0, so it is a perfect square. But no, why? Because here we have odd number of zeros. 1, 2, 3, 64,000. We have 1, 2 and 3 zeros. Therefore, the given number is not a perfect square. Is not a perfect square. Why? Because in one's place or in in given number, in given number, number of zeros are odd. 1, 2, 3, 3 zeros you have given number. Odd number of zeros are present. Odd number of zeros are present. That means if you have 3 zeros, the given number will not be a perfect square. Now let us move on to the next video. Find the sum without adding here. We should not do actual division. Without actual division, you should uh, show the sum of these numbers. So, for this sum of n numbers is equal to n square. What is this n square? Sum of n is what? The given number. Sum of n is what? n is equal to number of digits. Number of digits. First, let me count what are the number of digits here. So, you can see this is the number where you have sum of odd consecutive numbers. That means continuation, num continuation of numbers will be there. But those numbers are odd. 1 plus 3 plus 5 plus 7 plus 9 plus 11 plus 13 plus 15 plus 17 plus 19 plus 21 plus 22. Here you can see there are odd numbers which are which have continuity. After 1, 3 will be there. After 3, 5 will be there. Like this. Sum to odd numbers. Sum of n numbers. 
number numbers are odd numbers are odd and without adding actual addition you can say the uh, sum by saying a yeah, number of digits count the number 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 there are 12 numbers there are 12 numbers and its sum is 12 square because we have the n square 12 square is 1 to it so therefore the sum of the given series is 1 to it now let us move on to the next bit express 49 as sum of seven odd numbers as you can see here sum here the sum is given we should express it in the form of odd numbers sum of odd numbers that is odd consecutive numbers how we have done like same here but this is reverse process 1 Plus three, plus five, plus seven, plus nine. First, let me add and see. One plus three is four. Four plus five is nine. Nine plus seven is sixteen. Sixteen plus nine is twenty-five. Twenty-five plus eleven is thirty-six. Thirty-six plus thirteen is forty-nine. So, therefore, one plus three plus five plus seven plus nine plus eleven plus thirteen gives you forty-nine. Sum the sum is this is equal to forty nine and this is the uh, sum of all consecutive numbers. So how next bit? Let us move on to the next bit. How many numbers lie between squares of following numbers? Here two numbers are given. Twelve and thirty. Twelve square is one forty four. This is square of twelve. Square of one forty four and this is one sixty nine. Square of thirty. So between one forty four and one sixty nine, how many numbers with count is square of twelve and square of thirty? There are some numbers, of course, one forty four and one sixty nine are two different numbers in between. How many numbers are there? You should find out, but without counting. Actually, you can uh, have a general formula that is n and n plus one. If n is twelve and n plus one is thirty, what are the numbers between these two general form is general form is 2n 2 into n what is n here n is 12 because the first number is 12 so 2 into 12 that is 24 24 then what how many numbers are between 12 and 13 square 12 square is 144 and 13 square is 169 between them there are therefore there are 24 numbers. There are 24 numbers. So this 2 into 2, 2 into 2 is 24. You can say that there are 24 numbers between 12 square and 13 square. Now let us move on to the second exercise. Find the square of the following number. So here a number is given, and this number square we should find out, but without multiplication. How to find out the square without multiplication? Split this number into two parts. Thirty plus into thirty plus two. Why? Right? Because there are mass as the square. Square in the sense you have to multiply the number two times. Here it is a number square. Ten into ten which is ten square. So this is thirty two into thirty two. This is thirty plus thirty. Thirty plus two into thirty plus. Now all of you have already learned the distributive property in your last class, that is your sixth, seventh, and all. So let us apply the same here. See, thirty multiplied by second bracket. This is first bracket. This is second bracket. To consider both brackets separately, first take first term of the first bracket, that is thirty into thirty plus two. Put the plus, and again second term. Two into thirty plus two. That means you are going to distribute this thirty to thirty plus two, and again two to thirty plus two separately. You are going to distribute two numbers from one bracket to the two numbers of the second bracket. So thirty into thirty plus thirty into two. Why? Because this is in the form of a into b plus c. A into b plus c. A into b. Plus a into c, and I also again say two into thirty. Here we have plus two into thirty plus two into. Now, as you can see, this is from the first bracket and this is from the second bracket. 
Because here this is addition, no need to put more brackets, you can simplify here. 30 into 40 is 900 plus 30 into 2 is 60 plus 2 into 30 is 60 plus 2 into 2 is 40. Now you can add all the numbers here. 900 plus 60 <coughs> plus 60 plus 40. 4, 6 plus 6, 12, carry 1, 9 plus 1, 10. So this is 1024. So what is the square? 32 square is 1024. Now, without actual multiplication, we have done the square of 32, that is 1024. And we are using here distributive property. 30 can be split, 32 can be split into two parts, that is 32 into 32. We can split it as 30 plus 2 into 30 plus 2. Then consider first bracket 30 into 30 plus 2 second bracket. Second term of the first bracket that is 2 into second bracket 30 plus 2. Again 30 into 30 plus 30 into 2 plus 2 into 30 plus 2 into 2. Now 30 into 30 is 900 plus 30 into 2 is 60 plus 2 into 30 is 60 plus 2 into 2 is 4. When you add all the numbers here you get 1024 which is the square of 30. Now let us move Right, the Pythagorean triplet, who is one member theory? All of you know the knowledge of the Pythagorean triplet, already we have discussed in the class. In the Pythagoras theorem, we have three numbers. Yes, three sides you have, where you are going to write those sides with, uh, you are going to denote with three numbers, which are called as Pythagorean triplets. And the triplets are those where the hypotenuse square is equal to sum of the square of adjacent side 1 or you can say leg 1 and leg 2, leg 1 and leg 2. That means the base and the height here. These two sides, these two, sum of these two square will be equal to this two. That is AC square is equal to AB square plus BC square. The side AC square is hypotenuse and AB square is yeah, this base and this ABC square is height. Any vice versa you can take there. But the sum of this Sorry, the square on this will be equal to sum of the square of other. So that is those three numbers are called triplets. But here the one the triplet, the other two numbers we don't know here dash and dash. Because you don't know those two numbers. One number is given. Anyway. So it is given that write a Pythagorean triplet whose one number is 18. One of those triplet is 18, other two you should find. And general form is 2m m square minus 1 m square plus 1. This is the general form. That means you should equate this number to general form and then find the value. First let us consider m square minus So m square minus 1 is equal to 18. m square is equal to 18. If you transform this here it will be plus 1. m square is 19. That means m is root 19 which is not an integer, which is not an integer. So if m is not an integer, then you should move on to the next one. Yeah, root 19 is not an integer, it comes in decimal. So let us move on to the next form. Already we have done m square minus 1. Now let us move on to m square plus 1. That is, m square plus 1 is equal to 18. m square is equal to 18 plus 1. M square is equal to, sorry, this is minus 1. If you transform plus here, this will be minus 1, this is 70. M is root 70. Again, this is not an integer. M is not an integer. Because it comes in decimal. It comes in decimal. So, this is not an integer. Again, you equate M. 2M is equal to 80. 2M is equal to 80. Now let us move on to the third part here that is already this also is done now 2 m. m is equal to 18 by 2. Once you transform this to LHS, the multiplication becomes division. That means in the numerator it goes to the denominator. That is m is 9. Therefore m is an integer. m is an integer. Now once you want to write the LHS, The other two. What is the satisfied equation? Series here, satisfied equation of 
in this series, what is the, or you can say in this general form, 2m has satisfied the value for a. So, what are left? Other two are left. These two you should find out with substitution of m. That means, you should put what is the m's value in other two given expressions. That is, substitute. m is equal to 9 in m square minus 1 m square minus 1 you substitute m as 9 9 square minus 1 9 square is 81 minus 1 which is 80 so one back triplet we got here the other triplet is m square plus 1 9 square plus 1 81 plus 1 which is 80 so the other three values we got here. Already one member was here, 80. The other two members are 80 and 82. Therefore, Pythagorean triplets plus R. 18, 80 and 82. So, what are the Pythagorean triplets here? 18, 80 and 82. How we can say? By uh, making them to adjust in this general form. First, let us see the general form. Always don't forget the general form. 2m m square minus 1 and m square plus 1 is the general form of Pythagorean triplet. And already one number is given in this three subject uh, expressions, you can say. In this three expression, which one will satisfy this 18? First, you should test because other two you should know. Once you know what is the value of m, then only you can. Proceed, proceed for the other two triplets. That's why I have considered first any one you can take out of these three, but I have considered here m square minus 1. If you consider m square minus 1 is equal to this triplet, then you will get the value of m. If m is an integer, then you can substitute the m's value in other two. But here m is not an integer, so move on to the next expression. m square plus 1 is equal to 8. In this equation, if this is satisfied, again you can substitute value of m in other two. But here, because again here m is not an integer, let us move on to the third. That is 2m is equal to 18, m is 18 by 2, m is equal to 9, m is an integer. Now, after trial of these two, we got in the third trial m is 9. Now, once you got this one, this 2m becomes 18. That means, this is the triplet value to 18. In the triplet, three numbers, 18 is satisfied for this one, 2m. So, let us move on to the next two. That is, substitute m's value in m square minus 1 and m square plus 1 separate. Because uh, other two triplets you have to find. That is, m square minus 1 is 9 square minus 1, 81 minus 1 is 80. And again, here m square plus 1 is 9 square plus 1, 81 plus 1 is 82. That means, two more triplets are 80 and 82. So, 18 is one of the triplets. So, here, Pythagorean triplets are 18, 80 and 82. So, so now this is the completion of your second exercise. Now let us uh, end this uh, session here and we will move on to the next revision part in next uh, video.